Good afternoon, Dave Ashcroft here at Ashcroft Transmissions. Just wanted to take a bit of time to talk you through a new product that we have available on our website, a new differential. Since the Salisbury axle on the 110 rear, uh, which, well, in 02, it was changed to a short housing differential, which have various design issues and various weaknesses. We wanted to make an alternative uh, with a heavier duty option. We made a number of design changes. Let me talk you through those one by one. The first one is the length of the housing. So this is what's termed the short housing for obvious reasons. It's shorter than the Rover housing, which means your pinion bearings are closer together. That causes more leverage on the pinion under load and causes the bearings to fail prematurely, which causes noise issues. So one of the first things we did was to extend the housing by 31 millimeters to make it the same length as the longer Rover type housing. The other thing to make the crown wheel and pinion teeth substantially stronger is to make it a hypoid design. So on the standard unit, the pinion is on the center line of the crown wheel. On the hypoid design, we lower the pinion by one and a half inches. This is the rover ring and pinion on the center line. And you have maybe two teeth in contact at any one time. This is the new hypoid ring and pinion we have made. So because we've lowered the ring and pinion down, the end result is rather than having two teeth in contact, the hypoid design allows you to have more teeth in contact. So maybe three teeth in contact, which spreads the load across uh, substantially stronger. A couple of other things on the ring and pinion. Look at the difference in the size of the pinion head, substantially different. We have these ring and pinions specially manufactured for us. They're made out of 8620 gear steel. And because we we're making them from scratch, what we did was iron out another one of the weak points on this differential, which is changing the crown wheel bolt diameter. So the standard crown wheel bolt, 3/8 UNF, which is 9.4 millimeters. Seeing as we're making the crown wheel and pinion, and these often fail, we upped it to 7 16 UNF. So we're going from 9.4 millimeters to 11 millimeters on the outside diameter of the thread. That allows us to torque from 60 Newton meters to 90 Newton meters, a substantial difference. The diff center, we've designed it so it takes standard or heavy duty 24 spline half shafts, because that wasn't really our objective here. Those rarely break in a standard road car or a high powered car or an overlander or a working vehicle. What happens is the differentials let go. <clears throat> so it takes the standard Rover diff center, not the 110 diff center. So you can use a four pin, a Rover locker, a Rover ATB, or whatever other center you like from a long nose housing. The only thing you have to do is drill out those 10 crown wheel bolt holes to 11.2 millimeters, so you've got a little bit of clearance for the bigger bolts. They're built with, obviously, Timkin bearings, the standard four that you'll find in the long housing, Corteco seal, new side adjuster nuts, the bolts that we mentioned, and a standard flange. We've had this product around for a while in various iterations, but we've always struggled with getting a quality, cost-effective product. We've now got a new batch on the way into us, which allows us to sell this product, which is well proven to a quality that we're happy with to give you a long lasting 110 or 130 rear diff. Now, one small point on the installation, because we made the housing 31 mil longer, you will need to modify the prop shaft, but that's not as difficult as it sounds because you can use the standard Salisbury one, which is an off the shelf item, not particularly expensive. There's details on our website. Just want to show you a couple of failures uh, that we often see. These are the design issues that we're trying to remedy. Typical, chroma bolts, fine, fine. Sheared clean off, sheared clean off. Another one here, exactly the same. The whole lot gone. Ring and pinions come off. Lumps go through the teeth. Another one there. The whole lot sheared off. Some have come out, some are still stuck in there. Either way, the diff's toast. And before long, another one here. Your teeth are off. Common failures that we see all the time on these. This is one we just popped together to show you. So from this angle, you can see the 
hypoid offset. That's obviously, as we said earlier, that's down an inch and a half. This one we've built up with a locker in it, built with high tensile 12.9 M16 cap head bolts, all assembled with a locker ready to go, direct bolt in for the uh, 110 rear, all nicely set up with a perfect contact pattern there, um, all ready to go. Any questions? Let me know. Thanks very much.